For years, I had dreamed of having a Gibson ES335. It's a really cool hollow body, uh, classic Gibson electric guitar. And I saved up some money and for my birthday, I finally went out and bought one. And I brought it home and uh, as soon as I plugged it into the amp and just, you know, started you know, messing around with it, just playing some chords, getting the vibe. I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the sound. It was so cool. Magic started to happen. I just all of a sudden started playing this little chord progression, which was kind of the verse for All For You. It became the verse for All For You. In a matter of maybe an hour or so, I pretty much, you know, built that whole song. You could say that that guitar uh, magically um, gave me this song, All For You. The song All For You, um, I was thinking about, you know, my wife and, and and we've been together now to be almost 12 years and we have a daughter, a uh, four-year-old, also we've got a son. Life is, is interesting, but at that time, Carolyn was pregnant uh, with, with Lennon, but we didn't tell anybody until the studio session someone found out. But but anyway, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, love and and. I had imagined, you know, what it might be like uh, for someone to uh, experience a 50th wedding anniversary. So my my grandmother and grandfather McDonald, um, uh, rest their soul, they're no longer with us, but they uh, they made it 50 years, and I wondered what it would be like, you know, to be married if we were so fortunate enough to make it 50 years and to be there and the experiences that we would share in 50 years from children to just uh, travel and life. And uh, I kind of realized that, you know, in order to stay together with someone, you kind of have to give everything to that relationship. So giving it all to someone is really what, uh, what that song's about. Um, and being willing to do whatever it takes to make a relationship work for that long. I had the opportunity um, to do the uh, Jimmy Kimmel show uh, with Morris Day and Snoop Dogg and, and my buddy Mozi. And during that filming of the, the taping of the Jimmy Kimmel show, I ran into a good friend of mine, Toshi Yanagi, who is the guitar player for the Jimmy Kimmel show. And we were hanging out backstage. He was telling me that he had a gig coming up at the Baked Potato. And I said, oh, we'll check it out. And uh, I found out he was playing with Steve Ferroni. I was like, oh my God, I love Steve Ferroni. He played drums with Tom Petty, Eric Clapton, Average White Band. He's just played with so many great musicians, a great drummer. And I said, man, I would, I would love to work with Steve. And he said, well, come to the, come to the gig. Maybe I'll introduce you and see what happens. So uh, I went to the Baked Potato and I got to meet Steve. And I, I kind of approached him and said, hey, I wrote this kind of, you know, kind of, 50s ballad almost and I was gonna go record at a cool studio and I'm trying to you know do something with uh, with, with different musicians would, would you want to play and he said that'd be great so uh, as I was watching the band uh, the band was called the Buzz Wizards so it's Toshi Yanagi, uh, Steve Ferroni on drums, Rhonda Smith on bass and Rhonda uh, played with Prince and she tours uh, extensively with Jeff Beck and has for like the last 10 years just an incredible bass player and also Matt Rohde on the keyboards. And Matt's the uh, musical director for uh, American Idol and The Voice. He does all the arrangements uh, for all the, the songs on The Voice and American Idol, just an incredible talent. And uh, so as I was watching this band, I was like, wow, these guys are amazing. This, this is the band. So I asked each one of them if they would be willing to do a, to do a song with me. And they said, yeah. So the rest is history. So I had this great band that I was going to be recording with and I knew I needed to go to a great studio. So when I was talking to Matt at the Baked Potato, he mentioned East West. And East West has been around since 1961 when it was originally called United Western Recorders. And it was started by Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby. 
just a very, very famous studio. So many people have recorded there. The Stones, Johnny Cash, um, the hit record, the Pet Sounds was recorded there. So now we're at the East West Studios and we start recording the tune. Here I am with Steve Ferroni on the drums and, and Rhonda Smith on the bass and Toshi Inagi on the guitar and Matt Rohde on the keys. And then I had some incredible background singers. Um, I really wanted to do that 50s vibe. Uh, the call and answer thing, and this song really called for it. So I had Oracle on vocals, and her daughter Rocky Rock, and I also had Lindsay Harper. It was a, it was an awesome musical ensemble to come in and, and knock out this tune, and also I had the, the pleasure of working again with uh, Sada Haru Yagi. Uh, we call him Sada Son, Sada. Uh, engineer, Grammy winning engineer. He did such a great job on this record and uh, he's just such a great guy to work with. And to be in that studio and that space and experience that love and energy and that music coming back to the speakers, um, it was just magical. From, from a boy that grew up in a small town in Indiana to be in a legendary studio like that, rocking out with these guys, he was like, that's what it's all about making music, making experiences, you know, doing doing what you love to do, you know? This is our life, let's make it happen. And so that's what that song, I guess, uh, the inspiration for that song came from. Again, thank you for everything. Stay safe out there, hope to see you soon. Peace. And there's nothing